2018 has finally come to an end for me doing reviews for movies of 2018 movies, except when I do my quick movie reviews, which will be coming out soon, but until then, here are the best movies of 2018, in my opinion. Woo! Hey everyone, welcome to the Top 10 list. Welcome to my Top 10 Best or Favorite Movies of 2018. Yes, um, I, I, I call the video Best of 2018, but it's really my favorite movies of 2018. Like, this is not best. You can't, you can't objectively say the best movies of 2018, because you can't really judge that, because I don't think anyone can really fully judge that. Just best sounds better, but really this is my personal favorite films of 2018. Again, I think people should just take this as all subjective, not objective, because these are just movies that just, like, affected me, and the movies that just made me smile the most, or just, uh, made me more emotional, or just got me more invested than most other films th this year and stuff, and whether, what movies may affect me may affect other people differently and stuff, like, a lot of people have different opinions and different thoughts, and... Like, maybe some of your favorite movies might not even make this list because that's your list. Everyone has different thoughts, different lists, different opinions. And this is my opinion. These are just the films that I think are my favorites of the year. Not best, even though it's called best, but these are just my favorite films of 2018. So please not judge, just watch the video and enjoy. So yeah, let's get to it. And as always, before a top 10 list, you gotta have your... Honorable Mentions. It's a little piece of paper, so it doesn't sound as epic, but still. Honorable mentions. My honorable mentions are Ready Player One, Incredibles 2, Leave No Trace, Instant Family, great movie, Creed 2, Hereditary, Paddington 2, Isle of Dogs, and Roma. Great films, just give me a top 10 list. But we didn't even my top 10, it was my number 10. My, my number 10 is Black Panther. Yes, Wakanda Forever! I loved Black Panther. What, what Ryan Coogler did with this movie was so fucking good. Uh, the cinematography, fantastic. The effects, really good. Maybe not so much of the ending, but still a really great, great movie. The cultural impact it had this year was fantastic. It just, it absolutely, it, it blew me away. This movie was so good. It had great characters, great performances. One of the best villains in the MCU with Eric Killmonger played beautifully by Michael B. Jordan. He had a great year. Creed 2, Black Panther, fucking killer year, man. And I just, I loved this movie. This was such a great addition into the MCU and stuff. Such a different movie, different story with awesome characters. I just got fully invested in it. In it. And when it came out on Blu-ray, I just couldn't get enough of it, watching more and more of it. And yeah, fucking love Black Panther and I fucking love this movie. Coming number nine is a movie that a lot of people don't agree with me on, or just a lot of people didn't, didn't even see this movie. And I don't know why, this movie's awesome. That's Widows. Widows is directed by Steve McQueen, who did 12 Years a Slave and Shame. Very depressing movies, but still very good, solid pieces of work, and I think this is one of his best films. I like that he went more of a mainstream popcorn feel, but also adding his artistic style with the filmmaking, and I thought Viola Davis was so great great in this movie. Uh, Elizabeth Debaki was fantastic, Michelle Rodriguez was great, Liam Neeson was great, I thought uh, Daniel Kaluuya gives some of the, one of the most creepy, unsettling performances of the year, and I would give him a supporting actor just for the performance he gives in this film. Like. Oh, like he's unsettling. One of the best villains of the year in a film. Widows was great. It was just a great crime thriller, and it just shows you that all female cast in a crime film can be super fucking badass. I know Ocean's 8 was okay, but this one was way better than Ocean's 8. It was raw, it was gritty, it was well directed, very well executed, and it just has a killer cast, and yeah, I loved it. Coming in number eight is Mary Poppins Returns. Mary Poppins Returns, again, might not be on anyone's top ten list but mine, but yes, I'm glad to be different and original, but Mary Poppins Returns was a worthy sequel to my favorite Disney movie of all time. I loved this movie. I loved Emily Blunt as Mary Poppins. The songs were kick-ass. The animation sequences were so great. It just brought me back to the 1960s of Mary Poppins, even though it doesn't take place in the 1960s, but you all know what I mean. But yeah, I love this movie. It's so great, and yeah, not as good as the original, but what is, and yeah, fantastic movie. <laughs> Coming in number seven is probably arguably the greatest action movie of the entire year, and that is Mission Impossible Fallout. Mission Impossible Fallout was so great. These Mission Impossible movies just always knock it out of the frickin' park, especially lately. Uh, Ghost Protocol was always my favorite, but Fallout is now my new favorite. Rogue Nation was amazing. Mission Impossible 3, the first one. Every Mission Impossible is great, but two. And this one is just so great. What McCory does with the direction is so great. The airplane sequence is amazing. That bathroom fight with the Henry Cavill, Tom Cruise, and that random Asian dude. So much a, such a badass scene. The chase sequences, the, the, the sheer tension 
of this movie is so great. Cinematography is great. Tom Cruise is great. Henry Cavill gives a legit awesome performance. And Andrew, I've only shit on. Get shit on him in this movie. He's just so great, so badass with a cool mustache. And yeah, it's the best out of all the Mission Impossible movies. And it's one of the best films of the year. Coming in number six is Avengers Affinity War. Yes. Yeah. This is not the only superhero movie I'm going to have on this list either. So yeah, great year for comic book movies. And yeah, Affinity War, awesome. Again, speaking of villains, like, this was a great year for movie villains. Like, my God, Thanos played by Josh Brolin. What a badass villain. Like, in the, you never see a villain actually win at the end. The spoilers, but I think everyone knows the goddamn ending to a fucking Infinity War. But, my God, one of the best endings to to any film this year. One of the best endings. And I would have been perfectly satisfied if that was the ending of all the MCU films. What a dark and awesome way to end all the franchise. But yeah, yeah, obviously we're going to get Endgame, which I'm excited for. Infinity War, which is so great. It brought all these characters all into this film, and it didn't feel convoluted, and it didn't feel jumbled. A lot of characters got their screen time that needed their screen time. It had a lot of heart, had a lot of humor, had a lot of badass action and cool visuals. And of course, one of the best villains in the MCU. So yeah, what more do you want? Coming in number five is probably the most creative and most original uh, psychological thriller of the entire year, and that's A Quiet Place. Yes, great year for Emily Blunt as well. Great, great year for Daniel Kaluuya, a great year for uh, Michael B. Jordan, and a great year for Emily Blunt, apparently. Uh, a Quiet Place was so great. Uh, directed by, written and directed, and starring John Krasinski. Living a, a, a story, a horror story about... This, uh, our Earth and all these aliens have taken over and they can't see, but uh, they can hear and stuff. And, uh, you have to be very quiet and everything and everything has to be all in silence and stuff. And the way this movie is filmed, especially with its sound mixing, is absolutely brilliant. The sound design in this film alone should get nominated for an Oscar, but Emily Blunt is incredible in this film. She gives a phenomenal performance. Same with John Krasinski and his direction is absolutely top notch. I want to see more and more horror films by John Krasinski because this guy really knows how to create tension. The score was amazing. The two child performances were amazing. All around, this movie was absolutely incredible. And yeah, like my heart was racing while I was watching this movie. It's a nonstop thrill ride and I fucking loved it. Coming to number four was easily one of the most unique thrillers of the entire year, and that's Searching. Searching, oh, I love this movie. Uh, this takes the found footage sort of style, the, you know, the fucking, uh, uh, the webcam sort of style. What is it? Uh, no, no, not the webcam. Um, uh, you know what I'm talking about. It's found footage, but, uh, all through the computer and everything, uh, the Skype thing, uh, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> basically, it's about this guy, played by John Cho, and he basically, his daughter goes missing. It's basically him just searching for her, searching where she is, and why, why did she run away if she ran away, and who did this? If someone kidnapped her, why did they kidnap her and stuff? And it's up to him and this detective, played by Deborah Messing, to find out and crack the case and stuff. And how this movie is filmed and cracked is absolutely genius. The direction is absolutely fantastic. The thrills is throughout the whole film. You're like you're nonstop unnerved by this movie because you have no idea what happened to this guy's daughter. And my God, this has one of the, another great climax to a film with a twist I did not even see coming. And yeah, I thought it was amazing. I was blown away by this movie. And yeah, it's easily one of the best of the film, best films of the year. Coming in number three is the best animated film of the entire year, and it should win best animated feature at the Oscars. It probably won't, but it should. And that's Spider-Man Into the Spider Verse. This movie was fucking amazing. I think this might be one of the best Spider-Man movies. It's right there with Spider-Man 2. I think this movie was so freaking good. I love this movie so much. Uh, <laughs> um, I, Miles Morales finally gets put on the screen. I've been waiting for Miles Morales to come in a movie, and they did it, and they did it so fucking well. The story with all these multiple Spider-Mans, which is so cool. And another good year for Haley Steinfeld. Great year for certain actresses, actors and actresses. And yeah, Haley Steinfeld's great. Jay Johnson's great. Nicolas Cage is a noir Spider-Man. That's just amazing. The creativity and the style of, the, of this movie is just so beautiful to look at. And I know Incredibles 2 will probably win Best Anime Feature, but I really hope it goes to Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse is the best superhero movie of the entire year, easily. Coming at number two is one of the two films I'll be rooting for, for to win Best Picture at the Oscars, and that's Green Book. Green Book, oh, this is this is driving Miss Daisy Don Wright. I loved this movie. I loved these characters. And these two incredible performances by Viggo Mortensen and Mahersha Ali both gave amazing performances. And Peter Farley, Peter Farley directed this movie, the guy who gave us Dumb and Dumber and other weird movies. Dumb and Dumber's funny, but the rest of his movies, not so much. But... This movie was great. It was a hard-hitting story with great comedy. 
it's a, a phenomenal road trip buddy movie and I, it deals a lot about culture and race and music and just, it's just an all all around delightful film that i absolutely loved and yeah it's better than driving miss dizzy so yeah <laughs> And my number one favorite movie of 2018 is A Star is Born. A Star is Born is my favorite film. This movie affected me so freaking much. I was bawling by the end of this goddamn film. The performances are amazing. Bradley Cooper uh, deserves all the love. He wrote, directed a terrific, terrific, terrific remake. This movie's been remade like four fucking times. And he did it so good in such a cool, modern, different way. And he did an amazing job. His performance is also super, super good. Lady Gaga is also amazing. Don't sleep on her winning an Oscar. She was in Phenomenal, phenomenal. Same with Sam, Sam Elliott and Dave Chappelle and Eddie Griffin. Weird as that is. Uh, the music is amazing. The story, the chemistry between these two is just beautiful and amazing to watch. And I, well, I won't spoil anything. Just check this movie out. And uh, believe me when I say it's one of the best films of the entire year. It's my favorite. So that's my top 10 best movies or favorite movies of 2018. So, you, so yeah, in the comment section below, please tell me. Just grid the top 10 list. If not, Give me guys top 10 favorite movies of 2018 in your guys' opinion. Comment below, let me know, and as always, if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and join the dark side.